Masteress. Do they call it a masteress no, or master a master? No, masteress. Isn't master. it still, still master. Master. mistress? You mm. can be a mistress. Mm. Well, you can. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> <laughs> Today's podcast is going to be about you, Patricia Stanley, being um, a major veteran, as it is, of this trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've got Lee Dargan and Paul Byron here with guesting. And uh, So welcome, Patricia, to thank here. You. And thank you for coming and um, sharing your experience. You said that you live in Poland. Oh, I, Poland, yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. How does this work? Well, I have extended family out there and... Um, when I started visiting it, oh, it's, it's just such a lovely place. Mm. And uh, they were about to go into Europe and to, to join the Union. Um, and I thought, well, it's, it'd be a good time to buy a house before they yeah. actually do that. Sensible. Because the prices just skyrocketed mm. after. So um, I bought the house, but I didn't move their event immediately. Uh, I went through my mastership with the Worshipful Company of Hackney Carriage Drivers and uh, moved out there after that. Right. What, after what does a mastership entail? I don't, I've not heard of a mastership with the Hackney Carriage. They won't let me be a member, by the way, but I've not heard of <laughs> the mastership. I'm head of membership now. <laughs> 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 cool. We might let you in at a, cool. <laughs> an extended cost. I'm barred. I'm no. barred. No, the mastership of the Hackney Carriage Drivers, what is that? Well, I, it's being master of the, com- the company. So you'd be the boss? Only for a year, yeah. Oh, okay. So they, you have a round robin oh, so kind of. So you've had a year, like Stephen is at the moment. So yes. Stephen's mm-hmm. the master at the moment. So you've had a year as a master. Yes. Ah, masteress. Do they call it a masteress no, or master, a master? Isn't master. it still, still master. mistress? You can mm. be a mistress. Well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, apparently, that was how I was told. <laughs> so, Patricia, how long have you been a licensed London taxi driver? Um, I passed the knowledge in 1981. Oh, that's the oldest wow. I've. What were you, seven? What are you talking about? You passed in 1981. <laughs> oh, then oh, peanut are kicking I was. in. You were seven? I was. <clears throat> Seven, yeah. Yeah. I was born that year. I was six. Go on. Yeah, I was six when you passed out. I left school in 82, so I was 15. My goodness. So you really must have passed out very young. No, I was in my 30s. So it's all plastic surgery and makeup now. (laughs) 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 I love it. I can see it. Okay. So uh, you have, are you still driving a cab for any purpose at all or you just no I've, I'm retired now yep okay yes. so when was the last time you drove a cab uh before covid just okay. before covid okay well and, you know. uh, and then during that march I was here for a court meeting and a dinner the uh march uh, meeting of the Hackney Carriage Drivers and uh, I had to take the taxi back because work seemed to die within a couple of days yeah and I had to get out of the country, otherwise I would have been stuck here. Mm. <laughs> I got on the oh, last yes. plane. I got on the last plane back. It was uh, organised by the Polish government to repatriate people back to Poland. Yeah, to and get them out. <clears throat> yes. And you went on there. Where do you live in Poland? A town called Torun. It's uh, it's, an, it's a very pretty town, a medieval yeah. town, and uh, fortunately it wasn't. Too destroyed yeah. during the war. You know, it's still got its picturesque buildings and. And you, you bought that before they came into Europe for a few zelotis? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you did pay in zelotis? Uh, or you pay in euros? No, I paid in swati. They, yeah. they still use swati. Oh, swati? Oh, I was a lot of was, was lotties. Yes, but the in Polish the L is pronounced as a W. Oh, my Polish. I've got to brush up on my Polish. It was always a bit rusty. <laughs> <coughs> I have been to Poland uh, in 1989. Oh, you was only nice. a cab driver for a few years then. Mm-hmm. You was seven, eight years cab driver. So you was nearly just a but a girl. 41 years then that makes it, if I'm not wrong, that you've mm-hmm. been a cab driver, which is extraordinary. Um, would you say it was worth it? Oh, God, yes. Oh, golly. I'm <laughs> I loved it. Yeah? I absolutely loved it. But in them days, I mean, it's still quite male-dominated now. Oh, in them days it was how horrible. Mm. dominated was it in the 80s? I mean, what? how Very. did you gain the strength to be a female cab driver in the 80s? What made you do it and what were your influences? Ah, oh, well, I, I wanted to basically be self-employed. Yeah. And uh, I'd worked in offices since I'd left school 
banks and all sorts, and yeah. I was just totally bored with it. Mm. Um, I did phone the LTDA one time. I found their number in the phone book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kids today don't know what that is, yeah. but go on. I found their number in the phone book and I phoned the LTDA and asked them, I wanted some advice, how does one become a taxi driver, a licensed taxi driver? And the woman there actually said to me, women don't become taxi drivers. You're joking. So the woman at LTDA <laughs> said, you can't be a cabbie. The yeah. woman at LTDA. Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, but that's not the answer I want. <laughs> yeah. I said, how do I go about becoming a taxi driver? First, you have a sex change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she gave me a load of rubbish information. Yeah. Um, you need to have held a full driving licence for three years. Mm. Yeah. The knowledge takes four years. Mm. So I thought, crikey, O'Reilly, I can't even drive yet. So I've got to <laughs> learn to drive an older driving licence for three years. Four years, I thought, no, I can't be bothered with that. So I kind of stayed where I was in the office. Yeah. And then I watched Jack Rosenthal's play. Yeah. Ah. The Knowledge. Yeah. And in that play, there was a young lad doing The Knowledge on a, on a provisional driving licence. Mm. And I thought, well, Jack would make that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so I, from that... From that film, I, I found out about the carriage office and where it was. So I contacted the carriage office and I said, is it true that I, you know, you can do the knowledge on a provisional driving licence? And they said, yes, as, as long as you pass your driving test before you pass the knowledge. <laughs> I said, well, what, what do I do next then? He said, well, you, you come for an interview, you, you make, we make an appointment for an interview. And I said, well, can you do that then? Mm. He said, yes, of course. Wow. Yeah. Did he then say, but I'm sorry, you are a woman. <laughs> 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 yeah. Was you the no. only woman at the time or? No, there was one green badge driver before me, lady. You are the second woman green badge? Yes. My goodness. Can you bring the first one next all, time, please, Lee? Uh, <laughs> get all yeah. the best guests on. Yeah. Second best. Second. Yeah. Second yeah. best That's what guest. I said, next time bring the first yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Patricia, what is your badge number? Well... The original. It's, uh, my original, I can't remember. It was 4-2-something. Yeah. But I'd lost it. Um, yeah, that happens. And uh, I, actually, I think I lost two. But my badge now is 53768. Still, oh, my, my original is 57007. And my second one is 70063. Uh-huh. Don't worry, you'll lose your badges. Yeah, you'll lose I keep your badges. thinking that. I keep thinking that's going to happen. On the back of mine, if that yeah, 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 yeah. and a telephone number. It ain't yeah. a bad idea. No. But yeah. I actually think, and I, I, I know they probably won't let us, but I actually think we should be able to have them remade. Um, I would pay fifty quid to have mine remade, and uh, in Turkey with the original number. Yeah, yeah. I'd have yeah. exact replica remade, and they should even offer the service themselves to mm. have it remade. Yeah. Do you know, remember the story about the bucket? Apparently, any oh, badges that were put back uh -huh. or, or given back in, and you lose your badge, you could go in and, and do a lucky dip into the bucket and take a badge. Oh, no, they didn't have that when I... Uh, I had it in Sylvie's I, day. Sylvie's, but yeah. Sylvie's not a cab driver as long as Patricia. No. Uh, I, I wasn't offered that. You know yeah. Sylvie. Just, you yeah. must know Sylvie. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a three, three, zero. No, I know, but he, was, he passed out in 82 or 86, if I remember right. Oh, so was that his dad's number then? Oh, I don't know how he's done it. Um, yeah, because you could you used you to be can. able to take your. Yeah. I, I'm 96, number. and my number's 57,000. <laughs> so 10,000 before that for 86 would be something like 47,000. Okay. And then it would be right. You would be possibly 40,000 and a bit okay. for, for 81, 82s. Yeah. So, yeah, Sylvie, if he's got a, young, a lower number, might have taken over someone else's badge number mm. that you could have done. Um, he might have then been in the bucket. I think he was a bucket man. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another question. So um, did you rent a cab all these years, or did you have your own cab? I first off, I rented. Right. Yes. Who did you Who did you rent off? Frank and Case. Ah, of course. Yeah, in Tottenham. Legends. Yeah. 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 They're no longer there, but um, no. yeah. No, I know. I know that they were very big. Yeah. 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 They were main. They were a yeah. dealership. Yeah. 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 They're huge. Yeah. yeah. And they had a lovely guy there that you know would teach us to drive a taxi. And uh, get us through the police test. Yeah, which no longer happens. No. We don't have a test anymore. We just you're straight from the knowledge, straight in a cab. And the only person that shows anybody 
anything in the cab is the proprietor mm. occasionally. They haven't, they haven't had, do, you, do you even have a test? Did you have a test? Do I had a test? test, yeah. Seven, that was seven, only seven years ago, but they dropped it about two years later, I think. Your test was in a private test centre or in the TFL PS, PCO test centre? It was where they do the driving tests for cars, normal cars. Okay. Was yours at Southgate Road, Patricia, when you had your test? Yes, I think it was. Yeah. I mean, well, see, well, mm. let's yeah. Leave it to us old schoolers. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you had, they, it was... Um, all pebbles. So you had to do a three-point turn on pebbles. <gasps> and you mustn't dry steer. So you mustn't push the pebbles. So as you, if you turned the wheels before you moved, the pebbles would just push aside. Right. So you had to move and drive. And they were watching for you to s- make sure that you didn't steer while stationary. Mm. And you was obviously no power steering. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen that. Yeah, yeah, the guns. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, it Patricia. took so much strength to yeah. pull that around. Uh, what was you driving? Was you driving an FX4? I think it would have been the fairway. I don't no, know. No, 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 not a fairway. No, it was an FX4. I think. Yeah, FX. The fairway was like uh, a Bentley compared to the FX4. Yeah, I bet it was. I think the fairway came with power steering. I think uh, you owned you, a I cab d- as well that was you mentioned yeah. earlier. It was a uh, Asquith. Asquith? Asquith, you yes. owned an Asquith, yes. the 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 one that's done like a uh, wedding car. Thirty two, it's a copy of a nineteen thirty two London taxi. Wow. They were lovely. There was a select amount of them yes. back in the nineties. Yeah, seven. So you had one of seven. Seven. Yes. Wow. And th- was that your own taxi? You yes, owned that taxi. I owned it. Yes. Wow. I, I they they were hand built, and we had to just you know order it and wait for it to be built. Yeah, yeah. And and how many years were you allowed to drive that for? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Yeah, they t- because there were so few on the, you know, the sort of different regulations that kept coming in about... Yeah, yeah. Um, the term. Yeah. Well, yeah. they had the turning circle. Yeah, no, not, not the term. Oh. There was no term. The term. So oh, the term, now, sorry. Now it's 15 years. Oh, You're right, allowed to yeah. keep the cab from new. But what was it then? Was it more? Was Endless. 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 Yeah, we never had a term. Madness, isn't it? Yeah. You, and there were, there were guys driving around in beautiful cabs that were really old, that had kept a mint. All the chrome yes. was gleaming. Yeah. yeah. Um, they had pride on, in their cabs. Oh, yes. yeah. You still get people with pride in their cabs now, let me tell you, but mm. not so much on a rental cab, more on a on a, on a a musher, musher cab. They all mm. do. Yes. And they're very, very disappointed that they've got to hand that in after 15 years. And I can understand that. Yeah. Mm. Because they love that cab. They've had it for so long. It's their it's their pair of slippers. And they don't want to let it go. You must get, get it. some cabs returned in pretty poor condition. Yeah. Yeah. It's you frustrating. Do. You do. Especially yeah. when they when they're nearly new, you you get them back and you and they're finished with them because they're going to go and buy their, their own their mm. own cab. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get my own cab now and they just give you yours back in in a state and you think How's yours going to be when yeah. you have yours? Is yours going to be like that? Probably not. Probably you probably not. look after yeah, yours, yes. won't you? Yeah. You know, and that's how I feel it is sometimes, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. It did used to be the reverse. When we used to rent, the garages did tend to sort of like put plastic bands on things and, and uh, plasters just just to keep the thing running. You'd come in, the wheels would be hanging off. Yeah. they say, I'll just tighten this nut. You just take that back out again. Uh, yeah. th- they would just try to keep mm. the thing on the road. Yeah. It was falling but apart. There's still garages like that now. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Name and, name oh. and shame. <laughs> name and shame. We're not here to do that, are we? <laughs> no. So, Patricia, you've had quite a few cabs. I'm really impressed with so much already. So, the Asquith, wasn't it? It was a. Yeah, it's well, like was, a I wedding did, car. Yeah. It's it beautiful. Was, I used it as a wedding car. Oh, you mm. did? You weekends, did weddings for yes, weekends? Every weekend. Yeah. And it got to a point I was having to arrange my life around the weddings. <laughs> well, of, of course. You know, yeah. because it was, I was just booked two years in advance. Wow. That's, that's how they used business. to book it for a yeah. wedding. You must be minted. I oh, was. Well. <laughs> 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 right. Uh. Oh, so you had an FX4 probably. You've had the Asquith. I didn't, I didn't even have an FX4. I think I had an FX3. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> I bought I bought the one my first cab I bought from uh, Man and Overtons. Yeah. Um, Did it have a luggage door? Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it did. Yeah, but uh, it was they were absolute rubbish. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, they were. Yeah. yeah. If it was raining, you'd put your foot on the brake and you get a shoe full of water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and things like this. They were absolutely awful. Yeah. And if they didn't get much better. Cold, freezing yeah. cold. Yeah. Did you have to put your arm out? 
Come on, mate. <laughs> do they have indicators? <laughs> yeah. They did no, have indicators. It, it did actually have indicators, but they yeah. were rubbish. Yeah. Do you know some of the extras you used to pay for was mirrors? Yeah. You you could get a left hand mirror and a right hand mirror. I think the the left hand one of the mirrors was an extra. And they were these were, these cabs were manual, right? They weren't automatic, were they? No, I had an automatic. Oh, you had an automatic. Wow. 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 I mean, yeah. Oh, you yeah. you always travelled in Honestly, class. I I got, but um, when I was with Frank and Case, they actually had the very first powered steering cab, and he right. let me have it. Oh, right. That was an absolute delight. Yeah, mm. of course, after that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never going back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Obviously, the knowledge for you back then, how long did it take you to pass the knowledge? 11 months. It's incredible. Isn't I mean, it? that takes that long now to do the to most people. Shut up. It's because women are better at the knowledge and well, people are more intelligent oh, yeah. back then. <laughs> it was different then, wasn't it? They, I mean, and I think they... they they do it in sections now, don't they? The carriage office gives you sections or LTD? No, the LTD are trying to create sections. Uh-huh. Uh, that's their plan. And I, this will be something we'll try and discuss in the future, but I don't know the motivation for creating sections because I've pointed out it's been tried twice in history mm. and I've been there for both these attempts and both of them were disasters. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. And uh, for some reason, uh, Steve McMurray is s- s- deciding it's something that they want to do again. And I, I don't know, and I'm all willing to hear, what is the benefits or positivity reason mm. for doing it? And I don't know. It, it doesn't make too much sense. You mean like... Um, like uh, 80 runs and have a test. Oh, another 80 runs have another test. Oh, oh, I see. So, okay. so modules. Yeah, modular yeah. testing, modular breaking testing. up. Well, it's kind of modular testing now anyway, but it's go away and do a decent amount of work before you come in. The problem I had was when you've done 80 runs, it would be like learning your times table up to five and that's all you know. Mm-hmm. And then they ask you something six times six and you think, well, uh, I've only done up to fives so far. Yeah. And that's the problem that's you awful. hit. Yeah. yeah, so the reason we go to 320, or back in your day, 468, you'd have done 468 runs, I think. Mm. After that, it went down to 400, and now it's down at 320. Mm. Um, and the reason you do all 320 is you got to have a, a kind of beginning of a broad knowledge. And as you know, Paul, as well, uh, and you would have experienced it, Lee, as well, if you've done all 320 runs, you can't do point to point after that. You can't answer anything. You have to actually now learn phase two, which is... Um, like learning your times table, but I'm not going to ask you a times table question. I'm going to ask you something that proves that you understand the principles of basic maths. Mm. So, yeah. So were mm. the questions based more on blue book runs? It, well, yes, they were. But, I mean, they used to change change it slightly. Um, but with that blue book, what I did is I worked in, I did a quarter of the way in from the front and a quarter of the way in from the back, and the runs were all crossing themselves. Mm-hmm. So by the time you get to the actual centre part, you know that you know it all because they're all crossing each other anyway. Yeah. Okay, you know. Mm. Um, but yes, they would change it. Say like uh, one time he said to me, "Take me from a bo- uh, block of flats called the White House." I thought, oh. Mm. Um, well, sorry, sir, I don't know a block of flats called the White House, but I do know a hotel called the White House yeah. in Osnaburg Place. Yes. All Ooh. right, then, take me from there. <laughs> <laughs> he changed it quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was built with the White House. You know the White House apartments. Is this the one down on um, Belvedere? Yeah, I would yeah. expect it would be that. Yes. But Osnaburg you, Place behind the... No, that's the hotel, the White House Hotel. Oh, oh but when it, if you want, the back, if you want, Oh, I don't, I don't know. There's a White House apartments, but I don't know if they'd have been there in 81. I don't know if they were fairly new or fairly old. Oh, I can imagine they would have been pretty new <coughs> then. Mm. I don't know if they've been built. So how many appearances did you get through to pass the knowledge? Um, oh, golly, I can't remember on my card. I mean, my first appearance, I got 28 days. Yes, which was common back then. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got your drop from 50, 60 straight away to 28 days if you was considered that you'd done mm. enough. So I think I'd be two of those and then I dropped down to 14. And Yeah. Um, but I used to, I used to, well, I was lucky. I, I was able to answer everything they asked, yeah. you know, and I'd go back to the knowledge school and they say, oh, would you sit on his lap then? Did ah. you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where was the Where was the knowledge school, Patricia? 
Um, who, who was your knowledge school? In Pen- uh, just off Penton Street. Okay. Knowledge College. Was it? Pat, this is, was his name Pat, the guy who ran it? Golly, I can't even remember. Was it the shop on the corner? He had the little shop on the corner. That's now, uh, I don't know what it is now. That was uh, Malcolm Linsky had that shop, didn't he? No, Malcolm created another shop, shop later on. Oh, it was like the kiss of death because he opened up the shop and uh, the carriage office decided to move from Penn Street <laughs> to somewhere else. <laughs> so it's like he had the shop and then it was gone. But the other shop was Knowledge College, which was there first. Oh, right. Uh, they were there for quite a while. No, it was quite a big building down the side of... Off Penter Street, actually opposite, I can't remember the name of the street, um, opposite the carriage office that when you drive, it's you can see. White Lion Street. That's, yeah, it was quite a big building. And there was this examiner that everyone goes on about called Mr. Orm. Did you have him? No, it's just before that. She's Mr. Lippitt's. Era. Oh, really? Lippitt, yeah, I yeah. don't know. So Stuart? he was pre... Was there a Stuart there, wasn't there? Cool, no, I mean, I, I am not a historian exactly, but I do know it was... You're, you're the area of Lippitt, aren't you, Mr. Mm, Lippitt? Uh, Orm would have come after you. You'd, wow. you'd have finished the knowledge long before Orm came along. Um, but Lippitt was bad, wasn't he? Yeah. L- Lippitt is the... I'm not sure if Lippitt is the man they based the the on the play Joe's parrot with, with play. a parrot. With a I, parrot. Got, I got feelings. Probably. That was that was who yes, it was based on. Yeah. Yes. Was he the one who had the parrot in the room? No, that was no, Orm. that's Orm. Oh, that was Orm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we we really are talking history here, Paul. We yeah, are I really know. going back. Yeah. And, oh yes. dear. It's great. We, me and you are walking around in feeler tracksuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're not. No, because you're seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even a twinkle in my mum and dad's eye then. (laughs) Was you not even born here? Uh, 81 I was born. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So this is historic. So So you were born the year she's driving a cab. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're driving a cab 41 years later. And you've passed out (laughs) this year. Yeah, 41. There you go. There you go. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. And Pat, okay, I just want to reiterate that you are the second woman to drive a cab. (laughs) So now I believe we've got... (laughs) How many women drivers have we got? I did, I did say this in Seven. a pod, podcast. <laughs> Seven. Uh, we, we've got like 300 and something now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something. not a great progression. No, opinion. and I blame Pat because she's basically <laughs> been doing this for 41 years. Yeah. Right? And you'd think that she in some way yeah, would have got it, someone else <laughs> to do the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> but P- Patricia, it seems really weird that so few women do do it. Mm. Because yes, it's a I'm great job. I've never understood that either. Mm. I, maybe having to... Ride a motorcycle. Cool. Yeah. Did What's you do it on a motorcycle? I did. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. It is. That is something that it is some. That it can be off-putting for anyone, not mm. just a woman, for anyone. Mm. I mean, uh, I know plenty of people who wouldn't do it for that reason because it's so dangerous to get on a bike. Yeah. yeah. You know, in London, in, in central London. Yeah. Um, you know, it gets more dangerous by the day in, in to drive, even ride a bike. You know. Um, mm. I remember doing the CBT and I thought, oh, do I go and buy all the safety gear? And I thought, actually, there might be a chance I don't like it. Mm. Yeah. So I didn't bother. I borrowed some stuff from a couple of people, got a yeah. helmet. And um, I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. It it's took good. hours off of trying to do anything. Yeah. I started off in the car. I'd have to go at three o'clock in the morning to try and get the runs done. Mm. I don't know how to do it in a car. It's not possible. No. But um, it was lovely. I really enjoyed it. Mm. I don't know what the statistics are, but my view has always been this with motorbikes. I, I like motorbikes. Mm-hmm. and But I think... The fatal accidents on motorbikes in London are going to be very, very few. It's high speed accidents on motorbikes that are the, the killers, mm-hmm. which is always country roads and out when you're getting up to speed. So generally, if you're driving along in London, we're all 25, 30. You might get 40 and 50. But if you're going out on the A13, I should imagine that's actually, yes, well, where the, the statistics it's would It's the come. commute for a lot of cab drivers or, or knowledge students. They don't all live in London. That's the point. Well, Patricia I mean, commutes from Poland back then, 1981. <laughs> She used to get on the Cub 90, I imagine. I didn't know yeah, the A13 went there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, yeah, that, that is that is the hard thing. And but but the actual job itself, when you get there, it suits a woman. It suits a man, yes. but it suits a woman yes. especially. I think, um, you know. And how would you say? What would you say to someone to get someone to start the knowledge now? To for for a young woman or an older woman, whatever. How would you motivate them to do the knowledge? What would you say? Well, it's just the freedom of being self-employed and being able to work whatever hours you want, mm. when you want, mm. Mm. early morning, late evenings, whatever you, you want. Yeah. Take your children to school, go to work, pick up the children, yeah. have dinner, maybe even go out and do a li- little bit more work. Yeah. Mm. And, yeah. You know. So it's culturally still 
there's still this man and woman cultural thing going back to the 50s and 40s where man goes to work and it's still happening in this particular thing because the only women that tend to do this tend to be out of necessity single mothers uh, and the brave because uh, there's some these does seem to be a need for some bravery into doing this but the a, a woman that's generally married to a man who's got a job tends to think well I'm going to go to Stratford shopping center and buy something well, so, yes that comment so, was made to me last night, actually, at a dinner. Really? Yeah. I'm really surprised you finished the knowledge. I said, why is that? He went, I just thought you would have lived off the other half. <laughs> wow. But, oh, but do you think yeah. there must be truth to it yeah. then? There must oh, be there people must be, yeah. that yeah. actually yeah. And think. I thought, well, I like my own money. Yeah. And they were surprised because they thought I could have a nice, cushy life sitting at home. Mm. Bizarre. Yeah. Mm. And now you've got double the income. And a freedom and uh, an <laughs> independence. Stashing the money away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder yeah. who pays the cab rent then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, John. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's game's dead. I'm yeah. at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that that is offensive in in, in a yeah. way because you know it's still going back to the dark ages of coming oh, like mm-hmm. that. You know, hundred percent. Oh, I've got to cut that bit out then. No. <laughs> uh, That's the reason. I oh. think that should motivate any woman to want oh, to fake do taxi something like get this. Get that shot to me all no, the yeah. time. Yeah. Original. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that today. Well, you're yeah, getting yeah. seen in that cab, Miss Taxi, a lot. I've yeah. seen the comments on Twitter. People have said to me, is that your cab? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Lee's in that cab. And so, it, What's Miss Taxi? So well, one of my cabs, which Lee rents, the white, white one. cab, yeah. and then the number plate is Miss Taxi, M-I-5, is M155 yeah. TXE. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I got the I got the, 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 ca- the plate to promote women to do the... Knowledge. Oh, okay. I wanted to have a cab out there yeah. that showed uh, no, that no, women no, can no. be um, cab drivers. I'm a TXE prima donna, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the comments. Oh, really? If someone let me out yeah. and uh, up the road, he got stuck behind a bus. And oh, I obviously yes. failed to let him out. So uh, I'm a TXE prima donna. Wow. Yeah. This is, this is the, the that care. won't be the worst thing you get called in this business, I'm afraid. No. You know. I'll tell you, the good thing with that number plate, I've got off two parking tickets. Because they put M I five five T X C. Cut that one out. Cut that <laughs> one. Cut, yeah, cut. one seeing that because we want to keep getting away with that. And that's on my development. I was yeah, five yeah, minutes yeah. late getting back to the cab. Yeah. And uh, they gave me a parking ticket, and I went to pay it, and I thought they put the wrong number, number plate. Number plate. There's yeah. a little trick there, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Twice they've done it. Actually, just twice. Tw- twice. Same, the but, same operator. But my obje- my objective has been reached. Uh, yeah. Lots of people have noticed it, and they've but noticed also, you in it. They've noticed yeah. Sue in it. But also the abuse that Sue got for having that cab at the beginning. Yeah, it was horrendous. Terrible. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was really embarrassing. Bad. This is us. Embarrassing. So yeah. we've got to put our hands up. This is our industry that have done this to someone. Yeah. They, and, uh, and she'd wanted to give it back, didn't she? she mm-hmm. A couple of times yeah, she said, yeah, I can't yeah. do this anymore. So yeah. she just passed out. Paul rented a cab of the one that I've got at the moment. And uh, the abuse she got from cab yeah. drivers. And she's a world class taxi driver. Yeah. Yep. She's b- amazing. Yeah. Um, but she. Fair play, so she went out and... Carried on with it. She carried, carried on. on, bought yep. her own cab, um, yep. and she's cracking on. Thankfully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's great. It's a good It's a good yeah. advert. You're doing yep. really good, mm-hmm. um, and people are noticing it, and it's great. Yep. And that, yep. hopefully that moves on. Yep. That's almost unbelievable, really. It's, uh, sad, isn't it? It's very sad to think, even today, 40 years on from when I... You know, I used to get quite a bit of abuse, but now I... It, Still... Yeah, yeah. God, I find that astonishing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take many, Patricia. Though, does it? Let's imagine there's a hundred cabs you, you, you drive by, and four of them. You're looking at four percent of cab drivers being. But it's not just archaic. out on the road now. It's, it's social media as well. Oh, like, social you know, media. That they that they someone know. will say something, and then it will, and someone else will jump in, and yeah. then you get end up reading these comments because it's on the so on the the wider platform and. It gets back to people, and it's not. It's not nice. It's, mm. it's you get nice. tried and convicted on social media. <laughs> you you can do something yeah. in your cab that's mm. completely nonchalant. You have no idea what you've done. Next minute, someone's put on social media. Look at this guy. He's done this, and it's all from behind. You're being yeah. filmed. You have no idea it was you, and uh, it's as if they're the taxi police. Oh, they for something. convicted oh, Lee. Like, they've convicted Lee of not letting. She didn't let him <clears> out. She didn't know she didn't let him out. Obviously, because we know Lee. Um, but this person had made the. Uh, it's embarrassing. Seem like Grown men. I know. Like if it was my, even my t- teenage child, I'd be like, uh, you're embarrassing. Stop yeah. it. But yeah. 
I, I, they've got too much time on their hands. Mm. It's, <laughs> or, I don't know, mm. shouldn't you be working? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of a grown man on a keyboard. Keyboard oh. warriors. Oh, honestly, it's oh, embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 But back in your day, you didn't even have a mobile phone. No. When did you get your first mobile phone? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Um, I could... <sighs> Shall I help a little? Because I think it didn't start until 93, 94, 95. Yeah, it was quite a quite long time after it yeah. excuse me, started. Yes, because, well, they were those great big bricks, yeah. things, weren't they, when they first started? Mercury one-to-one. Oh, I was going to do you want yeah. to carry that around? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you didn't have phones, you would have the radio, right? You'd have work from the radio, or was it just basically... Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Was you even allowed to have a radio in your cabin 81? Oh, yeah. oh, you, you mean <laughs> the radio you a wasn't allowed? Radio no, a, a radio playing music. No, That's a, no. And then the Comcab, you're talking about Comcab having a yes. Comcab radio. Yes. I'm not sure when that came in. I, I, I was on Comcab. From the very beginning? You knew enough, yes. How did that work? You had a carrier pigeon? <laughs> to, <laughs> no. to land on a cab and <laughs> say, can you, can you pick someone up from Oxford Street? <laughs> they, they were constantly on, you know, you were listening to them. Most most of the time, and if a job came that was you you were close to, there was a button you would press, which would, you know, how big show was the button? Was it a big red button? Like it was a big red button. Yes, yes. you <laughs> have to press. You have to, and it's on your dashboard, and you had to <laughs> slam this button to get the job. <laughs> and I tell you what, I used that button uh, one time. I had two guys in the back of my cab. And they were being really quite abusive. <laughs> they, they were they were a bit drunk, but being abusive. And I said, "Look, oh, and they weren't going to, didn't want to pay." I said, "I don't care if you don't pay. Just get out and stop giving me a load of abuse. Yeah. That's all I want. Mm. Just leave me alone." And they carried on. I said, "Look, I'm giving you one more chance." I said, "Because if you don't stop this, I'm going to press that red button." <laughs> <laughs> and the police have assured me they could be here in two minutes. Technology. And that is what that button's for. It's yeah. an emergency button. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you going to get out and leave me alone, or are you going to? Oh, okay, don't worry. Okay, so they paid me the money and got yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what is this? <laughs> Amazing. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm still the, the button still got me though. So you press the button, yeah. and then how do you know anything? Well, <laughs> I've, I've done the button. Well, you got you got the button. You press the button, which stops them, and then they come they come onto your call call your number. Yeah, and uh, so then you, you just sign. tell them where you are. You yeah, a call, call sign. sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you could two way communicate with them though. Yes, yeah. okay. Yes, so there was you a, had a microphone. Right. You told them where you were. Yes. And the microphone was really big. You had to. <laughs> it kind of came out like this. Yes, it was quite. I think exciting. I remember seeing that. Yes, it was. That's yeah. incredible. So in thirty years' time, we won't have these microphones, and they'll be whatever they are, and we'll be talking about these podcast things. But when yeah. we back Same. in the day, yeah, yeah, them yeah. old people. Yeah. Look. <laughs> God, it's yeah. He's got his skateboards in the back. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Young, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> this is my corner. That's your corner. God, yeah, that's amazing. Dear. No, that's, that is probably one of the best things I've heard in years. I don't remember this big red button. Oh, dear. And the radio thing, I, I heard recently that was Georgie Vice that yeah. was the person yes, campaigning to, yes, get, campaign to that, get the radio yeah. put in the cab because what reason was there yes. not to have a radio? It's um, it was the licensing. Passengers. Um, it was obviously, I know it was licensing, but oh, yeah. why? 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 What, um, so, you could, so you could communicate? Was, was passengers, no, could, didn't you disturb no, them? It disturb was the uh, due to the um, like pop music... You ha- you had to have a specific license to be able to. Oh, you know, maybe like, like you know, yeah. like when you go to a pub, they PBS. Oh, that's license. it. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. So that was the only reason they couldn't have the radio. Right. And but we eventually got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but, so but then, how did they then get there was a that? time when they they were changing, updating to cassette radios. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> <laughs> and the carriage office would let taxis have cassette radios in case you recorded the people in the, the conversation back. of any passengers. Oh dear! He wow. recorded. <laughs> I mean, it was a cassette player, yeah, not yeah, a yeah. recorder. They they was all, they were a little bit further behind than we were in <laughs> terms of the technology. Back then, there's still a little bit of a problem. But back then, the, the rules were so strict. We were very scared of all sorts of little things that you could and couldn't do. Stickers on your cab. I see a few people like you say with the stickers. You, you couldn't put stickers. No. 
Mm. I don't think you can now, but I don't think anyone's policing anything anymore. Well, you mean livery? Well, livery you pay for, but the livery would have to be approved. You can't put any livery. The livery yeah. has to go through a process of being acceptable. But you couldn't put a sticker on your cab that showing that I like to go surfing on the weekends. No. No. That won't happen. No. I got stopped yesterday by the PCO. They were doing checks. What did you do? They wanted the driving licence, badge number, the bill, went round, checked the cab, took photos. Happy days. Let me go. Yeah. Okay. One of your cabs, Paul? Yeah. Yes. 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 Should have got a stop note. Said a shady owner, but you can go. Shady owner, yeah. <laughs> what they'll do is they'll why now write to me. Why do Why do um, the tyres and things, just to make sure, I suppose, oh, I that they have right. to con- yeah. mm-hmm. comply with what they'll do. They'll, they'll write to me now and say that, uh, and give me a warning and say that there wasn't enough no smoking signs in the cab. Oh, because what they do now, they 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 present the cabs when they're brand new. They don't put all the right signage in when yeah. they're brand new. Um, they still license them when they're brand new, and then do we need a year later when they come out on the street, they'll say you didn't have enough no smoking signs. Why do we need that? no smoking signs? I mean, you, you don't need a no-smoking sign because smoking is illegal inside. Play. We, we're all now brought up, surely, on that culture now. It's been enough years. Yeah. And now you want us to have no-smoking. I hate stickers yeah. in, in anywhere inside my car. And yeah. I hate them little badges. It does badges. look tacky. Mm. Yeah. It does look tacky. Yeah. Took my, um, my own payment system out. Right. Put your one back in. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're at the meeting the other day. You can't have your own payment system. Can't. No, but you you are. You have to. You have to have a, a, a spare payment system because... You have to have a backup. A Viva. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. have it to have it. It crashes. It does, it does crash. They all yeah. crash. Yeah. They all crash. Every system I've ever had since yeah. I've been out has had a problem. And but what about jumping in and out of cabs then? Yeah. How do I jump it, in and out of cabs? When you're in a different cab. Yeah. So some of the systems you can log in and log out of, some of them you can't. Right. So you and that's if I'm part of that system. Yeah, I have to so be a member of that system. So if you're in a spare cab for the day, how do you take payments? That's the yeah. point. You yeah. can't. That's another question, actually, Patricia. You didn't take credit cards in them days. Did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you this is it the was thing. all cash. There was no Everything credit was card. I <laughs> know. Oh, like, when did you start? Because, I mean, I'm assuming that the first lot of credit card systems were the swipe, with a oh, yes. duplicate paper, yes. weren't yeah, they? Yeah, the paper and the swipe. Did you have that. one of them yes. in your cab? Yeah. yeah. And Amazing. that was real credit because I would have thought in them days you wouldn't know instantly if they had the money because if you're just duplicating Well, of bit, course you don't. You don't. No. no. So then yeah. you'd have to have been really trusted. I, I never, I always wondered how that worked. Yeah. I, I still to this day I don't understand it. So you just had the little machine, you, you yeah. boshed through the thing, it yeah. kept mm-hmm. a copy of the card and that's it. You're yeah. yes. supposedly going to get paid. Yeah, but you can't get away with that now. This is the thing. Everyone knows what money you've got or what, what, how much credit you've got. Yeah. In them days... It was just on your word, wasn't it? Whether you had the credit or not. Maybe it's maybe mad. you had to be a certain category of money in the bank before you even got that. Or a credit card. With, yeah, so I don't know, did regular people back then, I was too young to have a credit card to know what the system was for getting one. I remember when I was really broke and I had I managed to get a credit card and, and I didn't have no money for petrol and I went to the petrol station because I knew I'd be able to get the petrol on a credit card um, and I'd been, in five days' time I'd have the money. That's how yeah. credit worked then, because you'd think, oh, in five days I'll have the money, so I'll use my credit card, because I know they won't be able to check if I've got no money, because of the duplicate uh, paper, you know. Of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm assuming that would be like that for most people in them days, mm-hmm. you know. And you, so you had you were carrying that around on your dashboard, or no, what no, you do, no. pass it through? It was in the side box. Yeah, and then you, what would you do? You would have to pass it through the... Yeah, well, they'd pass their card through. Oh, so you'd, and you'd do it yeah, in the front. Yeah, I'd do it in the front. <laughs> like an <laughs> ironing board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Lovely. they get their copy, and yeah. they keep the, the hard copy. Yeah. Patricia, do you remember how much a gallon of diesel when you first started? No, I can't. It's going it's to be about 25, 30 pence, I think. What, a gallon? You mean a litre? Less than 50p when I first passed my test, and that was in 92. So that's 10 years later. Yeah. So I'm reckoning, yeah, about 25p a litre. Yeah. In, yeah. In, in but were we on litres? Were we on litres prices? We weren't. It was gallons then, weren't it? It was gallons. But when, it, when did we change to, to litres? That's a Google question. Yeah, when did we change to litres? When you first got out, like when you'd done your first job or, or when you oh. was working. So, all right, we'll go back to that. But <laughs> was it... Where, where was all the work? So was you get, getting a job and then you was getting another job straight away? It was like that all the yes. time? Yeah, well, I passed out at the end of November, so it was coming up to Christmas. Yeah. Um, I didn't work, I couldn't stand working during the days because of daytime because of the traffic. Right. 
So I worked evenings. Yeah. Um, I used to pick my mother up from work from the city, take her home, spend a couple of hours with her. Yeah. And then I'd start work about half six, seven o'clock. Yeah. And work through the night. But honestly, it was one in, one out. Mm. They were even jumping off the pavement in front of you to get it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and as you said before, mobile phones, if I wanted to contact somebody, I'd have to stop, use a a public telephone. (laughs) (laughs) Right? And I remember what I was on the telephone to to a friend and there's bang, bang, bang on the door. You free? (laughs) (laughs) Can't you see I'm on the phone? I'm in a phone box. I said, I will be in a second if you want to sit in there and wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Oh dear, there's so much has changed, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what? It has become like that again. What, phone boxes? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I do, Dean, I get my phone and I stand in the phone box. <laughs> um, but no, phone boxes now in central London, people use them to take pictures in. That's a. Are there any? Yeah, it's oh, like yeah. Yeah. Right. Down, down Whitehall. Down yeah. Whitehall. Yeah. Mm. Oh, people yeah. have their pho- photos taken in the phone box. That's a, a, a rank. Yeah. It's a okay. Rank. Um, but yeah, now it's st- it's become that again, where people wait for you in their in the cab. Like, yeah. you'll go, I'll go to Mayfair Hotel, for instance, the other day, uh, pull up on the rank, and the lady's like, "Are you free?" And I'm like, "No, I'm going to the toilet. Can I wait in your cab?" And it has become like that again because mm. of what's happened recently. Yeah, which mm. is great. Yeah, you know. the job's easy to do when people are getting in and out. Yeah, but yeah. there's a lot fewer ca- cabs on the road now, though. Aren't yeah, there? that's right. Yeah, yeah there is. Do you know How the many number? cabs were on the road in the eighties? Do you know that? Roughly? I think it was something like 29,000. Yes. Right. So, my, yeah. I was going to say, I think it might have gone down slightly afterwards. It was 29 to 26, some you between these numbers. Mini cabs, right? No, we had mini cabs. Yeah, there were mini cabs. But, but not uh, to the scale that there no. is now. No. But you had the old mini cab office. The, yeah. Yes, that were yeah. from the office. Yeah. And then in the 90s, they started to work illegally a lot more. As the well, 90s in Soho. Came. Yes. The you illegal. had those little touts with the well, boards. Yeah, that's it. I can't remember what they were called. Yeah. But they would have a telephone on a wall. And that was it. And they'd be standing yeah. in the street mm. collecting. Yeah. And then there would be Cornhill. they just park up. There'd be a long row of saloon cars. And my friend who was a taxi driver probably passed out at a similar time as yourself. And he, he always used to say to me, they're, they're all got the ump. They're all upset about all these illegal cabs. If it's so good and you're lovely, get yourself a saloon car and go and do it. Yeah. That's it. If you're not happy with what you do. We're one in and one out at the time. Mm. What can you do? Yeah. They are taking the extra and they're very, are very often taking Overflow. the ones we didn't want to take, yeah. Mm. Mm. And the police would do nothing about it because of that fact, mm. that we couldn't get there quick enough, Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. You, well, you'd drive through Bank Junction or through Oxford Street and there, there's a, a thousand people that need a cab and there's only seven of you. Yeah. You can exactly. only do as many jobs and as you can. And it is very similar to that now, that's the <coughs> thing, isn't it? You yes. know, we can't take everyone and there is another Tier. option. Yeah. Mm. You know? That's yeah. always going to be. Yeah. I remember coming out of um, Bagley's nightclub in, uh, cool. in King's Cross. There would be a line of them, and there'd be like, and I remember being seven of us on the back of the back seat of a Granada. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Didn't care. yeah. That, there was no. It was lawless. Mm. I mean, we say about it being lawless now. At least we sort of can identify them. <laughs> but then there was no. There was no laws. No. There was no rules. Mini cabs could. They mm. weren't even mini cabs. Yeah. You know, they were just cars with geezers in <laughs> waiting for us outside. Cash. Ah, oh, so you, you don't know bonbonnies. You'd probably no. never heard of Benji's before that. I know no. Benji's. Patricia, what was your first job? Oh, this is the question. <laughs> <laughs> my first job, oh golly. Well, I picked up my taxi from Frankham and Case. As you know, it was in Tottenham yeah. and I was scared stiff. So I just drove down all the way to the city without putting with my light off. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I got into... Cannon Street, and I thought, okay, go for it now. So I put the light on, and City Gent put up his hand, and he was, you know, the bowler bowler hat, yeah, three piece suit, (laughs) striped pants, you know, (laughs) carrying a phone box instead of a phone. (laughs) (laughs) Even though it wasn't rainy, still had the umbrella. Yeah, of course. Um, Oh, oh, God, it's a woman. Hello, (laughs) hello. Is that what he said? God, it's a woman. Yeah. (laughs) Hello. Oh, Oh. he said, well, can you take me to, uh, where is it? Actually, it was near Pall Mall. So I said, yeah, certainly so. <laughs> Gets in. So uh, uh, how long have you been driving? I said, well, you're actually my first customer. He said, what, today? <laughs> but how long have you been driving? I said, no, you are my very first customer since I passed the knowledge. Amazing. Oh, 
golly, said, well, maybe it'd be better if I drive and you drive. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> if I drive, oh, oh, you really can make yeah. it up. No, that's brilliant. Yeah. And, the, and the bowler hat part as well, because he must have been the last knockings of a generation of people that actually thought the bowler hat was a good look. Because, I don't know, maybe five years later, ten yeah. years later, you, you ever seen a person with a bowler hat in a city now? Yeah. Well, do you ever see, you know, the the, the, um, the guys from the Bank of England, they used to wear pink towels, yes. didn't they? The pink jacket with the towels. Oh, yeah. I'm saying yes, I have no idea. Yeah. You used to see them walking about everywhere. What do you think of the fact that we can't drive down there now? What do you? F- what's your thoughts on that? What, the bank? Yeah, you can't drive it's around Bank Junction during the day. It's ludicrous. Great word. Of course it is. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. How, do, how do you get anybody who's in the wheelchair or, or need to, you know, who's disabled but needs to get to work there? <laughs> Just but they're still trying to push it to be fully pedestrianised and cycle. And no one from the taxi trade was invited to the transport meeting. Yeah, they're not, they ain't in favour of us. No. But I think the city police are very in favour of mm. having taxis. I can't understand yeah, that we're banning cars. We've said this before. Yeah. Banning yeah, yeah, yeah. cars. Yeah. Don't ban taxis, black cabs from London. But how are mm. girls going to get home after a night out in the city? I'll just mm. walk. How's anyone? Just, yeah, <coughs> no, I mean, we, we talk about women's safety. I'll correct you there. It's seven till seven. What? The bank junction thing, seven oh, till no, seven. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking... In general, they want to get rid of taxis. Oh, from certain areas. From, from certain areas. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, Then how do you transport these people coming out of a pub at 11 o'clock at night? Yeah, well, you just, just have to Just walk. keep walking. Yeah, just walk. Well, that's not going to suit people. No, it's not. No. Or cycle. You can so, as soon as you come out of the pub, yeah, get on a cycle because that's that's, that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, you've had, yeah. You've had ten pints, or you, you you can get drunk cycling, you can't you? You can be arrested for drunk cycling. I think you can. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, this is the point. Mm. Like, you know, I picked no... up at the brewery last a uh, couple of nights ago. Ten, fifteen girls waiting for cabs. Yeah. Please take me. I said I can't. I'm, I'm on a pre book. Yeah, yeah. How are those women going to get home? Yeah. Mm. That's it. Safely. Yeah. That's it. It took you nine months to do... Eleven. Eleven months to do the knowledge. So yes. now the average is, what, three to four years, would you say? Oh, I, I actually think it might have... We might be in an era where it's slightly got a little bit quicker, maybe. Okay. Um, yourself, you've done it... Two and a half. Yes. Yeah. So I'm seeing that happen Staggering. enough. <laughs> we are seeing it happen a little bit more often. The, the two and a half mm. year mark is coming again. Um, but what we're never seeing and we need to see again is below two years and you, there has to be there are enough talented hard-working people that can do this in under two years mm-hmm. but that's not happening because of tfl basically mm-hmm. um but yeah if 11 months <clears throat> in 81 and then from 81 to be honest it was an easier period obviously to do the knowledge in and this was my lovely moment with Silv was he he actually thinks people today are not actually working hard enough and that the reason that we're slower today is because we're not working hard enough and then you ask how many appearances Silvia took and he said five yeah. <laughs> it just makes people now laugh because if you did it in 12 that would be extraordinary mm-hmm. the, the 12s are going to be the elite and to be in the elite <clears throat> you not only need to be talented and have worked your socks off, you need to have been lucky. Without the luck, you're not going to do it in 12. And there's some very talented people that have done it over a longer period because they didn't have the luck. And this is another thing that we don't want to get into too much, but it's the inconsistency of examiners whereby why can one be so wildly difficult and others be so moderately easy? Mm. Um, or fair, would you or say? Or fair, yeah. Maybe. Is the word, yeah. I don't think it's ever mm. easy. No. I, I think... <clears throat> Lee, you know the funny thing when people come out of an appearance and they say, I had an easy appearance. No, you knew the answers. Yeah. The fact you knew the answers isn't yeah. because it was easy. Mm. You knew the answers because you studied. And the answers we know, it's extraordinary the lengths we've gone to to, to achieve. Or mm. they were sensible questions. It's probably the way to look at it. A cab, yes. a cab working question, city yes. to the West End, yes. West End to the city, hotel to a restaurant, you know. Halsden, Wilsden, I mean, I still don't know why you've been asked questions, leave on the left, sit down on the left from Halsden to Wilsden. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they're still asking them, but I mean, that was a yeah, no. a pointless question. Did you ask them? Uh, I wasn't asked. No, I was asked Streatham, leave on the left to somewhere else, sit down on the left. So, yeah. 
How many times are you ever going to do that? You Never. Know? No, I just think it maybe needs to be more practical. Well, they were they're debating today on the uh. WhatsApp group for the Wizam WhatsApp group for Canning Town Station. So Canning Town Station has got a, got a right-hand filter to yeah. actually set it down on the right-hand side. Yeah. <clears throat> and to set it down on the left involves going out of our boundary. Yeah. So you're out of the boundary. You're learning Hallsville and uh, I know the roads to drive them, but why? Mm-hmm. Roads that have no purpose absolutely at all that you'll never take a passenger to uh, and then you're going to come back and set it on the left it's um so the purpose of it is what is to make this false raised ceiling of our standard that we're having to attain um when we're already working extraordinarily hard to be what we are and it's a question that maybe you would have got a d on yeah and then you've got to wait another two months for yep. an appearance actually when a sensible question could have been asked and yeah. then you could have known the answer. Yeah. And I think that's probably why we have seen a reduction in, in the numbers. I think you could ask many people sensible questions and um, they wouldn't actually, if you're not good, yeah. y- you won't get it. You, you could literally stick to the four or five main train stations mm-hmm. and randomly pick one to the other and a bad student will still make mistakes yeah. on that and a good student would be thinking do i take a simple working route or do i cut it up i mean I- even the the simple trick of kings cross station to euston station poses the problem of how do you turn right into euston station so mm-hmm. when you're leaving kings cross you've got to go along euston road how are you going to get a right turn so you can ask really simple things mm-hmm. that are slightly tricky you don't need to go extraordinarily difficult but when you are going to a difficulty that is absolutely out of the realms of ever being needed Mm -hmm. then it starts to become a little bit unfair yeah Mm -hmm. i agree Mm -hmm. yeah and if you're then a person who gets that appearance more than once and yet your friends never had it you're now six points down they're six points up and it's a world of heartbreak i mean i know everyone says it's your own journey you shouldn't worry about what everyone else is doing but you do of course you do. You don't want to be stuck here. You know, we've got one of the boys. He's been unlucky yeah. on several appearances. All his friends have passed out now and he's still coming to school. Oh, yeah. And it's That's tough. Painful. It is. It and is. he doesn't want to come out for our Christmas dinner because no, he, no. Feels, he feels oh, embarrassed. embarrassed by it. So he should, really. Yeah. You know, he, should, he shouldn't Watch. eat again. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what you're saying now. Eat. Does yeah. he understand what he's yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> they, they even eat when he can't score on appearance. Yeah, but, but you that's, know, we're, that's, yeah. we're, we've been a really tight group, haven't yeah. we? A real like family. We've been yeah. two and a half years and we still meet every week for dinner. It's and you know, oh. you know that yeah. he doesn't deserve it. You know that there is no reason whatsoever for him to be getting uh, these kind of scores. And it is, it is either, I hate to say it, I don't know if it's victimisation. I think it's more just bad luck. And, and also the pressure. Yeah. Because it, and you increases. Crumble. You crumble yeah. because you, yes, you put so yeah. much pressure on yourself then. Yeah. And it's questions he probably will know yeah. to Easily, do. Yeah. But sitting in that chair when you know everyone else is out driving a cab and your third time round on 21s, yeah. you get disheartened. Mm. Patricia, you might. I don't know if you know a lot about the new modern system, but imagine, okay. imagine you went for your appearances mm. and you, I've given you your 28s and then I decide actually you're not good enough. I'm going to put you back to your blue book. So you have to go back and learn your blue book or I'm going to put you back and you're going to have to take a written test or you're going to get to your 21s and I'm going to decide that you're not good enough for 21. So I'm going to put you back to 28s and you're on 28s. And then I think we well, even ain't good enough for this. So I'm going to put you back to 56s again. So no matter how far forward you went, you could go all the way backwards and people experienced that people were on 21s mm. and ended up back on 56s at the very beginning again. So they created a system whereby, and I've never heard of this in any other educational idea that you could be punished for failing, even though we've already passed you. So I've said you're good enough to be on 28s, but now you're not. So you have to go back and start the whole cycle again. Um, it, snakes and ladders is the best yeah. way of, describing mm-hmm. it so that system came in in 2000 and uh was a, a system brought in to filter out all the people that were time wasters on the knowledge that had, they were i don't know if you had them in your day people who would sign on and never do anything but take the appearances because they've heard from their friends that eventually they'll give you a badge so those people would just do the knowledge all right um, and th- they started to clog up the system. So we ended up with something like six or 7,000 people doing the knowledge. Now we're down to about four or 500. 
So their their um, effort to cut back the numbers worked too well, in a sense. Do you know anyone that you did the knowledge with still? Yes, yes. You kept in touch? Yes. All men, I assume? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously I've met a few of the lady drivers yeah. over the years. Yes, we've become you, friends. But you kept, because this is what I think, so there obviously I keep... There are a couple keep, of guys, yeah. but I mean... One of them, he actually lives in France now. Right. He's retired? retired? No, he comes back and works. Comes back to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Would you ever consider coming back? I used to, yes. Because I lived in Poland, right? Yeah. I gave them my Polish address. Yeah. They, ac they accepted it and they even accepted my doctor's um, medical, medical yeah, yeah. from over there. Yeah, for yeah. For about two times I uh, renewed it. Yeah. And then they decided that wasn't good enough. I got to have an an English doctor, so I had to organise that. Um, and then they decided that uh, because I'm living in Poland, my driving licence should have be at the same address as where I'm living, which is fair enough. So I had to change that to Polish licence. Mm -hmm. Along comes Brexit, and they're write, writing me emails asking me for a copy of my DVA licence. Mm. Well, I can't give it to them because I don't have one. Because they made you change. Yes, because that years ago they made me change, oh. and now they keep. They kept. I'm tired. On I'm and tired on about to, this is ridiculous. About you know they want a copy of my DBL a license, and now they've revoked my license because yeah. I haven't got it. They took away the the world. So they took away cab your driver. your DVLA license. Said you had to have a Polish one. You gave them that. Then they. Brexit came along and they wanted you to go back to the DVLA license. You couldn't do it because you'd already given it up. Yes. That's excellent. That's just... I, I don't it know just, if it, you can that's Yeah. Gold. That is gold. It's yeah. just... Right, I'm just... The licensing department at the moment is in chaos and I would like to get someone to come in from licensing to do a podcast because it, it just is in chaos. We, we, mm. It's not just TFL, it's, it's DVLA. I don't know about that it's part. DVLA. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, when, Bre when Brexit happened and then <sighs> COVID happened... So many people couldn't get their licences oh. renewed and get their driving tests and all that carry on. It's a mess. Well, yeah, there was a huge delay in that, wasn't there? Because the lorry drivers couldn't get their renewals. That's right. And that's why it, everything was delayed. Well, that, it's just, that is just unbelievable. I mean, yeah, they, so you can't have your taxi licence back now, even if you wanted it back. Yes, you could get it back. We could work on it. We could. Yeah. If you wanted it back, I we'd get it I back. I guess I could. I don't know. I mean, also, the, it was the... Also, the um, medical uh, um, certificate yeah. thing, I had a problem with that because I wasn't coming over so often. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't get it on, done on the dates that they wanted it. Mm. You know, so I had to, used to, they used to delay it for me till May or something. Yes. Um, and then, then I could get it done, but... Um, then they kept on about, well, you know, you keep having these delays and it's got to be at this date and... You've got, you've still got your badge. Yes, yeah. and my bill. Proper East End girl. <laughs> <laughs> John Sheen, when he retired, he had somebody knocking on his door oh, asking do. for his driving, uh, his, his badge and his bill. Wow. And I thought, well, try and do that to me. Yeah. yeah. You're so so you're, at, you're from out of the East End then, Patricia, you're from uh, this area? I'm from Bethnal Green. Okay. Yes. Born and bred, where from? I mean, I am historically... As East End as you get. I mean, she's African and he's Greek. <laughs> so me and you are the only East Enders here. Uh, yeah. But you've got a wonderful accent. I love your traditional East End accent. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you from in Bethnal Green, Patricia? Um, I, I was brought up in um, Roman Road. It, went to Bonner Street School. Went to Morpeth Street School. Do you know which school I went to? Bonner Street School. And Morpeth. Morpeth Street School. <laughs> wow. There and I was brought up in Royston Street and Stainsby Street at the back of... My street was the street to the gates of Bonner Street. Oh, right. And yeah. we lived on the in very the last... House? Yes, the little houses at the very far end. Uh -huh. um, and then we moved to here and I used to walk to Morpeth Street School from uh, Bow every day. Pat lived <coughs> above the uh, Pine Rush shop, didn't you? Kelly? Yeah, we lived in... Uh, you Rome lived in Rome Road, Road above Kelly's. That was a great place to live. I mean, it was a bit of ahead of its time, really, because you had the block of flats above and all these rows of shops underneath. Yeah. Lovely. It was lovely, you know, from a off-licence to the pub at the other end and closed shops and everything. Who was headmaster at Bonner Street School when you was there? Oh, golly. 
question. <laughs> some questions here, haven't we? Oh. I heard someone told me, and I this don't is know, around I here, I, someone told me that they used to unload at the docks, they used to unload turtles, and kids used to ride the turtles. Do you know anything about that? Is this Are you going back to I am straight up. <laughs> Oliver Twist. I am. <laughs> no, I'm straight up. They, they, the kids used to unload, they used to unload these turtles. What, and, what were they bringing? The docks, big yeah. turtles. The giant turtles. To what, eat? Ki- yeah, turtle soup. And they used to, the kids used to ride on the turtles before they went off to the markets or whatever. They used to let the kids ride around on the turtles. <laughs> and where did you get that one from? I don't know. I, ju- I didn't just make it up, that's for sure. I'll, 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 uh, I'll, we'll Google it. Go- yeah. We'll Google that story 100%. before you put it yeah. out. My dad and granddad were both uh, robbers at Ninja the docks. Turtles. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 I can't believe it. We have a very, very shared uh, history. and um, yeah. yeah, it's cool. Yeah, well, that, that was, was, that was where we would hang about, Roman Road. We know. So you, do you never drink in the Bishop Bonner, did you? No. Oh, you wouldn't have... You would have oh. I'm trying to think now. How, when did you move away from Roman Road? Uh, when I was 21 to Old Ford Road. Oh, you moved oh. far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the passport for that and everything. <laughs> and then later I came back to Old Old Bethnal Green Road. So you, right. Um, the triangle. You've done the triangle, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always been East End then. So, no. Well, so we went to Poland. No, no. I mean, I'd lived in Canada for two years. I came back. Um, lived in Brighton for a few years. Came back. But I came back because, you know, my parents were getting elderly and I just wanted to be closer. Yeah. So how do you explain your accent? What accent? Is this what the accent I've always had? You remind me now of my Auntie Kay. <laughs> 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 my Auntie Kay was the same. She was very, very posh, but very East End. Your your accent is very posh to me. Am I, I mean, is it me or is it just my I, bad ears? I agree. Yeah. 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 Very well spoken. I'm, 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 I'm very well spoken. spoken. Well, I'd say well spoken as well. Yeah, traditional. Oh, you or no, not me. (laughs) Uh, Patricia is very well spoken. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. super well spoken. I I had you down as sort of like being brought up with horses, and um, it's your worst worst nightmare, isn't it? (laughs) Typical East End girl. (laughs) But I suppose the job as well when you're picking up certain people and you're talking to them. Was you was you was you a talking? So I'm a talker when I'm when I'm picking up my customers. No, no. Are you a talker? Yeah, I love talking. And <laughs> I would wait until they no, they'd have to start conversation first, which is fine. Um, and I'm quite similar to that. I don't yeah. normally talk, but I think you know. I sometimes you'll know yeah. if they want to chat because it's different now because a lot of them are on their phone. You know, when you yeah. look in your mirror and you see the head go, you think ah, they don't want to talk. Mm. Sometimes their heads up and you can tell they want to talk. And I'll always talk. Was you you were more of a like you wait until they speak to you, but yes. you probably got a lot of t- chat because yes. you're a woman. Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, that's so you're mm. talking to customers. So you were a talker without realising it, yes. I suppose. Yeah. But uh, again, yeah. You're, you're right with the phone idea as well. Yeah. I imagine back in our day of working hard, <clears throat> we probably had a lot more talkers than you currently get. Mm. They must yeah, all yeah, get they straight in. Phones, yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. They, they go sitting there occupying themselves on their phone straight yeah, away. Straight yeah. away. <clears throat> yes. they, they, you know, you even listen to their life story sometimes. Well, yeah, we still get that. I mean, Counselors. but you must have got it a lot more than what we mm. get it. Um, famous people, you, anyone, anyone you can drop, name drop? Well... I was shocked when um, Bert Lancaster got in my cab at the airport. Wow. You're joking! No. Amazing. Um, to Claridge's. Well, of course. One. Yeah. Uh, I can't beat I Bert Lancaster. No. You know, you just don't expect it. No, no. you don't. You, it happens. Just did you get a private car person? You know, yeah. did you get an autograph? I mean, that that for me is mega. Did, you didn't get a selfie, did you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That would have been someone with a portrait. Yeah. Just hold yeah. still for another 10 hours. <laughs> wow, <Well>, yeah. <laughs> but being on the comp cab, you used to get a lot of the um, actors from the theatres. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But you see now everybody's a celebrity, so I, you're picking up celebrities left, right, and centre. No, and, and then back then to pick up Burt Lancaster, I mean oh. the only person that I would have thought there would be three: Kirk Douglas, Burt Lancaster, and Steve McQueen. My goodness, wow. if you had the Imagine trifecta. <laughs> uh, but people, people listening now, I'd never heard of them. No, exactly. So, but for me, I had Christopher Plummer, which is not as big as Burt Lancaster. But for me, it was like, and I had to come home and tell my dad. Well, he was an absolute idol, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, and he was really, really brilliant in the cab. Uh, he was lovely, chatting another away. Person. Yeah, another person yeah. I'm going to have to Google. 
<laughs> Me too. Um, it's been an hour and ten minutes of like brilliant, brilliant banter. So fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I think-